Drop the line, jump off! Jump off! My name is Mike Rogers. Uh, we're going to be discussing a near miss that I had about a year ago. I've been on the job for about six years, been at Station 51C. Uh, my name is Nino Galloway. Um, in the date of the incident, I was operating as the public information officer. Captain Jay Ward uh, at Station 51C. On May 10th, uh, about a year ago, we were responding to an MMO fire. We had a good indication that we might be first on, and we did see a little bit of smoke in the distance. We could see in or out that there was heavy smoke coming from the Charlie side of the building. Battalion 5 arrived on scene first. We were right behind him. You could see smoke from the Charlie side of the structure, but it was kind of unclear if it was the house that we pulled up on, which was the reported address. We pulled a line to the back and then identified that the fire was actually on the street to the south. So immediately dis uh, called command and said, hey, send all the rest of the units to that side of the house. My captain kind of saw the structure a little bit more. I believe he informed Battalion 5 that the, the fire was actually on the structure behind the one with the reported address. Grabbed my turnout gear, went up, engine 51 had stretched a line, and my goal was to capture pictures, catch those guys uh, working. When we got there, uh, that structure that was reported initially to be on fire was not on fire and it was the one behind it on the Charlie side. We already had a line in place. There was multiple palm trees burning. The whole backyard was basically on fire. The wall that separated the house that we were at from the one to the south was short, was about a four foot little wall. Um, when I was walking up, one of the firefighters was running back to grab a ladder. And when I got back there, just let the captain know I was back there and I was filming and taking pictures. Pulled the line, started spraying water. I had one of my other guys go grab a ladder. Felt like we could make some progress um, on that backyard until crews got in place on the other side because uh, it appeared that it was impinging on the house as well. And I remember looking up and seeing the palm tree was on fire. Um, and right before the palm trees, there was cable lines. Um, it looked like there was both utility lines and high power lines, but they're pretty far away from any actual fire and impingement and the palm tree was pretty far away from it too. So uh, my partner went back, he grabbed the ladder, I was charging the hose line. The plan was to uh, try to get close to the palm tree because when I tried to spray the palm tree from the location I was at, it just wasn't quite reaching. It was pretty tall. Identified at that point that there were power lines that went across the backyard, but they were not directly involved in the fire. They were off to the side where the poles were approximately six to eight feet from direct flame impingement. Identified that to command, but said, hey, they're intact at this point. Still trying to make some progress on the fire um, until crews got in place. So we were operating by ourselves for a little bit. Captain Ward was letting him know, hey, watch it. Uh, he had called command to get Nevada Energy coming, so he's still taking precautions. But at this point, um, I'm not sure what the time frame was for when uh, the wires actually dropped, um, but I saw the, the wires drop between Rogers, who was on the ladder, and then the Zimmerman that was standing behind foot in the ladder. Next thing I know, Nino kind of nudged me and said, hey man, there's looks like there's wires down and visibility was pretty poor. So I identified, tried to trace the wire back to see where it was coming from. And at that point it arced. It arced and when it arced, um, my voice was no longer, hey, you see that? It was more yelling, hey, stop what you're doing. And I, I believe the recording will kind of outline what that is. Um, we're yelling at Mike, who's up on the ladder, to try to get a hold of him so he can jump off the ladder. But with our masks on, it's, it, it was almost impossible for us to project. So he was not, he couldn't hear us. So. In this part, I, I did not have my SEBA on, so that's why my voice is so clear. All the rest of them had their air packs and they were breathing air, so that's why you hear the muffled. Um, my concern at that point was that the natural habit of firefighters is to climb down off the ladder with the tool, but I wanted to make sure he separated himself from not only the hose line, but the, but the ladder by dropping the line and, and jumping off. 
Um, a lot of noise. There was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of radio traffic as the units were trying to coordinate their correct fire address. And, um, you know, I had my mask on, I was clicked in. So I was spraying, um, and I just remember like the sound of the, the, uh, the water, just try trying to do my best to make sure that the palm tree didn't catch any exposures. Um, just listen to radio traffic, listen to what my crew is saying behind me. Uh, and then uh, I'm not sure how long it was into the incident. I remember hearing kind of like a pop, uh, but it didn't, it didn't sound like it was near me. As weird as that sounds, it didn't sound like it was near me. And I remember just kind of looking around a little bit to see if there's anything going around and I didn't. Then I heard, um, I kind of heard muffled yelling and I heard firefighter Galloway or PIO at the time. I heard him yelling, jump off the ladder. Mike, watch your back. Uh, we're going to follow one away now. Move! He might need to jump off. Jump off. Drop the line, jump off. Jump off. Um, the only reason that he was able to hear us was because the Nino had his mask off and he was a little ways back was able to yell to get Mike's attention. Um, it was loud, it was, again, the radio traffic that it took me a second, I turned around and I remember making eye contact with him and he said very clearly, drop the line and jump off the ladder. Drop the line, jump off, jump off. And at that point, when Mike acknowledged us, it was like, hey, jump off the ladder, jump off the ladder, which he did. And after he jumped off the ladder, it arced again. It arced maybe one or two more times, but the second one was probably the, the loudest one. Um, I do sometimes on the fire ground, you end up just being lucky. Um, the captain caught it, the firefighters were paying attention, and um, they were able to walk away. So at that point, I contacted command and said, hey, the lines are down. There's a hazard back here. We backed out, gave him my par, and then we basically were just staging on that side until NV Energy showed up um, and until we could actually um, resume any kind of firefighting operations. If I ran a call like this again, uh, I think there would definitely be that, that index of suspicion in the back of my mind. Uh, on that particular call, if it was the same thing at the same time, I think we would still have done the same thing. Um, I felt like it was very unusual for the line to have failed like it did in the area that it was. Um, so it's easy for me to say now that I would have done something different, um, but it would have probably been the same. But if I was to run a call now, knowing how that happened, I would just have less faith in the lines, um, have more of a, a suspicion that they might fail even though it looks like they're not going to. Um, and that's what my big takeaway from that particular call was. Resting on some experience, knowing that you've got time before those lines fail was probably one of those things where I should have reevaluated um, and been more aware of watching it more closely uh, to when the lines went down. Again, we had bad visibility, but that doesn't circumvent me from not being responsible for the overall safety. Um, and then just from the time that I recognized the hazard to the time that it failed and arced was short in my head. Um, it could have been longer than I thought it was, but it ended up being pretty quick. So I think one of the biggest lessons is, is always be aware and just always treat as we should all lines as being live, regardless of if you can identify if it's a power line or a cable line or a telephone line. Um, the men on Engine 51 hadn't done anything wrong that day. I think we got a lucky to not have uh, anybody get injured. And having been in that position before, there's a couple things that I think are lessons learned. Um, when you have a lot of communication happening, pay attention a little bit more. Those are things, lessons that are learned over time in the fire service. Number two is that when visibility starts dropping, you have to start becoming a keen to your surroundings. And again, that comes from experience. And being a student in the business and having made those mistakes, I would definitely tell uh, firefighters in the future, um, use this as an example where nobody did anything wrong, but this job is inherently dangerous. So we have to learn how to pay better attention um, 
And of course I was able to because I was stepped back and not working. And so I think for those of you that are um, in an engineer role or a rescue, make sure you're paying attention as well because you might be able to provide information to the crews that are working because they have to focus on their attention to detail uh, with the task they've been given. Earlier on in your careers, you, you are more tunnel vision as the fire, but it is up to the company officer to take that broader picture, which is why we are not as hands-on during the active fire situations because we're trying to monitor the hazards. Um, I think it's just, it's up to everybody to be aware. However, we get task oriented and while you might identify a hazard, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've identified it correctly.